up everybody welcome to more trades uh saturday morning i hope all of you are doing well <clears throat> uh, uh, please like and subscribe uh, click the notifications uh, so you are not left out whenever i post updates on targets and trades i go live sometimes we have some long live sessions yesterday we had a good one I posted a live trade which is in profit at the moment around 70% in profit let's see if we get stopped out I move my stop slightly lower so even if it moves up I will be stopped out in a small loss I'm ready to take that loss uh, because my risk to reward I feel it's a good risk to reward ratio I'm looking at Solana at the moment and uh, there are two possible outcomes no one can tell you for sure the highest uh, uh, where will it go but you have high probability trades and low probability trades at the moment I am in a short I would say it's a high probability trade but we also have the possibility of going up now let me dig into it as you can see that Solana has been in this boxy range this rectangle uh, uh, between 18 and 14.1 14.1 so let's say 18 to 14 dollars that's a four dollar range and we had topped out uh and we double topped and that's a four dollar range so if we lose a 14 dollar i would expect us to at least come down to the 10 dollar again range i th i measured out in the live yesterday i had some lower targets i believe my targets were between the five and the ten dollar range i think the five dollar range would be the 1.618 extension not very sure about that uh you can watch uh you can watch the replay of that live uh but yeah i mean i posted in the community post today check it out hit the likes if you like the post or if you don't like it just hit the dislike but uh there is some some fud going around well uh there's some news coming out that there's some big amounts of funds moving out of FTX so if you are in FTX uh, the advisor is to uninstall the app for now until the dust settles uh, FTX uh, funds moving out millions moving out you have potential of uh, uh, I mean uh, Solana in the same respect was supposed to release a large amount of Solana from staking but uh, I think the storage or wherever they were staking that decided to extend the lock period which is which beats the purpose of being decentralized I mean uh, that is how can you say I mean it's a decentralized market but and then you have a bit of control some people few people that control it and they decided we're not going to unstake uh, the your tokens we're going to hold on to them probably they're also in fear of being uh, what do you say uh, insolvent and filing chapter 11 well now at the moment uh, FTX had filed chapter 11 Alameda research which is a big big liquidity provider for different exchanges has filed chapter 11 bankruptcy and one of the exchanges that it it provides liquidity to is Binance the significance of that is that if you have a liquidity provider in an exchange then you have smooth transactions but if you don't have a liquidity provider then essentially you will have slippage you might have uh, uh, what do they call it the spread might be a bit higher I'm not sure but yeah transactions won't be smooth a few days ago I was trying to take a trade on Solana when Solana was at ten dollars or nine dollars and something strange was happening on Binance it gave me a message something about uh, the 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 trader on the other end something was strange it wasn't going on on Solana I couldn't file a trade until Solana went back up to I think 11 or 12 dollars and that's on Binance which has a high which has high liquidity and high volume of trading so that was a strange message I've never seen that before uh, it came in a gray box and I couldn't place my trades so I would expect uh, if uh, Alameda Research call for Chapter 11. It's going to be bad for even Binance. Anyhow, let's get into the chart. Uh, the let's get into the chart and look at Solana. Solana at the moment 
is has moved up but on low volume you can see the volume declining it's uh, very clear over here volume going lower as we're moving up that usually happens I think when we're in a corrective wave uh, even though we moved in a somewhat a five wave structure it can be a five three five uh, we can be in an ABC we can be in a WXY uh, you can call it whatever you want to call it but in my opinion it looks very corrective then we had this move down which was also corrective we just had one spike of uh, red candle down but the entire move down the volume has been decreasing if you look here when we're moving down a few days ago on your move down because it was an impulsive move down volume was increasing the red bars were going higher and higher and higher you have some down movement in the red bars but nevertheless it's going higher overall at the moment volume is going down on the way up and on the way down it looks like a corrective wave now what do I expect what am I trying to say that we are moving up now but we are moving somewhat correctively so if we take a trend based FIP extension we can have some targets so we know what to expect so we take it from the low over here around nine Let's take it around 9. Point, yeah, somewhere around 9.404. And we bring it to the high where we peaked over here. Let's take it to the top of the wick. So that's our first wave to the end of our first wave. To the bottom, if you say our second wave is bottoming out over here. If you're going to count the wick. <clears throat> now we look at the extensions we would have a move up the way it looks like it either to the one to one extension or if it's even a wave C it can be a five wave move to the 1.618 at around 29 I see the one to one extension more favorable at 23.495 because we have the 200 EMA on the hourly which would be resistance and plus we have another resistance around 25.7 so even if we move up and I get stopped out of this, I'll be looking at those points for a rejection. But yeah, so we could be moving up. That's one probability, one possibility. No one can tell you for certain where the market is going, but we can be in another, uh, we can have another uh, possibility that we're gonna continue lower now. And because uh, at the end of the day, Elliott Wave is, probabilities you increase your probabilities by understanding them a bit and but they don't have to follow them to the T the market can do whatever it wants so if we get some bad news now uh, FTX or we've got FTX bad news if we get bad news from Alameda research we could just uh, essentially come down and uh, go test the lows again that we made a few days ago at around 9.4 that's not not very far-fetched uh, come Monday I want to show you something else uh, we had the traditionals they moved up so aggressively remember the day before this dump we had uh, the S&P Nasdaq and all of them were rallying like crazy I mean the gains were crazy it's not normal for a stock uh, for, an in for those indices to make like I think S&P made like 2% and then you had the Nasdaq making more than 10% and the Dow Jones as if they were uh, uh, Shiba Inu coin. Then we had this dump. I believe the stocks are going to top out very soon. The Dow Jones is approaching the 200 on the daily, I believe. Uh, I mean the S&P 500 is not far from the 200 EMA on the daily and that would be a rejection point in my opinion. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel. To, we would love to have you in our live, uh, in our live uh, streams. There's a lot of interaction. You get uh, to put out any coins you want me to do TA on, any index, indices, all the indices, any indices, index, sorry, any currencies. We do some TA, we dive down, we have a discussion. And yeah, the community is, uh, is great and is growing so we would love to help you trade better and would love to have you in there uh, thanks for watching more trades i'm out